A friend of mine owned a cat. The biggest, fattest cat you ever saw. It was orange and a hundred million pounds and it wouldn't move. It would just lie there like some dirty bath mat no one wanted to use. It was disgusting, <laughs> awful. And uh, the thing was, is like I at the time was thinking I should, you know, lose some weight. I, I, I want to work out, but you know, they say the best way to work out is with a workout partner. <laughs> and the only person I knew that was fatter than me was this cat. <laughs> I am serious. It was a big, fat bastard. It wouldn't even walk anymore. It wouldn't walk anywhere. It would just wait for you to walk by and then hook its claw on your sock and let you take it to where it wanted to be. And, then it... and the only time it would move faster is if it heard food being opened in the other room. And then it would just really nip at your heel and make you move along. Oh. Owning pets is a big responsibility. You can't go out drunk on a three weekend bender or something when you drink and you own a pet. You gotta be responsible. I like to drink sometimes. I'm not a big drinker. My friends drink more than I do, which is funny. I was at a New Year's Eve party with a friend, a girl, and she, um, she got right good and hammered, like within 10 seconds. You know, she's like, I do, you know, that kind of, done, done. And, and we lived in the same neighborhood, so she, she and I were gonna share a cab, so I'm just waiting for her to let me know when it's time to go. And at one part, the party's maybe 12.05. That's how into the new year we're at. All of a sudden, out of the sea of people enjoying the, the new year, she stands up out of the crowd like Nosferatu, we're going, and away she goes. So I thought, all right, fine, whatever. I go and get her. Here's the thing, if you're trying to flag down a cab with a drunk person, they won't stop. If they think they're drunk or unconscious or possibly dead. I am just saying, those are the, so I'm holding her, trying to flag down a cab and shaking her so she looks awake. But the thing is, you know, she's hammered. And the difference between hammered and drunk is one of her boobs was out. That's the difference. You know, and so I finally got a cab to stop. We get in and off we go. Now, she and I both live in the village in Toronto at the heart of Wellesley and Church. And let me tell you right now, right at the heart of Wellesley at Church at this New Year's, they had just opened a brand new pizza pizza. And it has this beautiful fish tank window that faces Wellesley. And that's where our cab stopped, at the lights. And I thought we're almost home. Good one, because everybody has thrown up in a cab. And if you have not, you were in a blackout and your friends have it on their phone. Be nice to them at Christmas. So I'm sitting there enjoying the fact we're almost home. Good. All of a sudden she gave me that international sign that she was gonna be a drunk person throwing up, which is basically this. But she's lying on me. I'm like, oh God, oh my God. And I'm screaming, my mouth's open. I'm trying to shut it. And she's trying to climb over me to get to the door. And I didn't know what the heck was going on. She throws the door open rose up into the street in front of all these gay men with their first slice of the new year and they're all, ew, happy new year. <laughs> pick your moments is what I'm saying. If you're gonna throw up, pick a friendly neighborhood. When I did it, I was at Jarvis and Gerard, which is a place where the ladies like to work, apparently. I don't know, I don't know. But all I know is when I opened the door, four women rushed the cab and weren't happy when I threw up on their shoes, I'll tell you now. It's not good. And it's funny because, you know, I, I don't even remember the rest of that cab drive, you know what I mean? All I know is I woke up in front of my toilet, which to me, success. We made it home. Good job, fatty. You know what I'm saying? So I, I peel myself from the bathroom floor and I'm going back to my room and I noticed that's when I noticed that I left the door to my apartment wide open and I'm like, oh God, how long have I been on the floor? What's going on? So I go and close the door, but I trip over the coffee table. I hit the door with my face. The door slams shut. I slide down the door into the carpet. My roommate comes running out of his room saying, what was that? What happened? What's the matter? And I thought I had very calmly said to him, nothing, I tripped, go back to bed. But what came out was, <laughs> which is the exact moment that I realized I don't have a roommate. <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? I wasn't even in the right apartment. Oh my God. I felt so bad, I did the only thing I could do, which was throw up on him and get the hell out of there. So I've been working out. Don't. 
It's not good. I absolutely hate it. Every time we do any little exercise or anything, I'm supposed to feel better about myself. But now I walk around like an 80-year-old man. Every day I go, oh, you know, ah, I can't, oh, you know, nothing. It's awful. And this is the thing. My trainer is great. I love my trainer because he comes to my apartment. He brings everything with him. I don't have to do a thing. And that was my selling point to getting a trainer. <laughs> Keep it simple. You come to me, keep it. If you do, I will not go on the subway to get, hate my life. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, but this I didn't think it out because I can't call last minute and cancel because he's usually at my door knocking and I live in a bachelor. There's nowhere to hide. He said to me that I needed to buy sweat clothes. I said, I sweat in all my clothes. That's not what he meant. He said, he says stuff to me like, he'll say, do squats. And then I say, no. Well, actually what I say is no. Because if I shake my head, it's cardio, is what he told me, so I'm... He confuses me with things to get me to act, uh, work out more. Like, he'll say, good job. Now it's time for active rest. One leg squats. And I'm like going, oh, I love rest. Rest is great. Rest, active rest. A active rest? How can you have active rest? You can't, the whole point of rest is to get ready for more activity. If you have activity, there's no longer rest. What the hell are you saying to me? And then that's when he says, other leg. Ugh, there's always two sides. What the hell is that? I said to him, no, fuck it. I want to walk funny my whole life. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the other side. I'm not working. I'll just stand in doorways. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm going to buy a balloon bouquet, strap it to my leg, and camouflage that one side. I'm gay. Who doesn't say I'm not going to a party? Hey, everybody. Pop, pop, pop. I'm not doing it. And he's trying to create activities for me in my not workout times to be more active. And I said to him, I have the best activity. It's called sitting. It's the best, because you can, it's a base activity. You can do everything when you're sitting. For instance, one of the things you can do when you're sitting is surf the net. It sounds like exercise, so I count it. Three hours of surfing. <laughs> The other activity I like to do when sitting is watching TV. Watching TV is the best activity ever. And my trainer says it's not cardio. And I say, yes, it is. Because I watch TV like a black woman in church. There's a lot of screaming and yelling. Sometimes I faint. It's fabulous. Here's an example. I was watching TV and the best commercial I'd ever seen in my entire life came on. I was in Nirvana. I had the phone in my hand. I was going to buy this product. It was the best product ever. It's the Lappen Snack. Have you heard of this? It's a bowl with two channels in it. It sits right on your leg. You got chips, you got pretzels. It is the best thing ever. I lost my natural mind. I was gonna buy two, one for each leg. I had a hot pick that and everything. Yeehaw Lappen Snack. Do you know what I'm saying? And then as I'm waiting for the number, I'm like, oh God, oh God. The screen on my TV cracks. I freaked out. Because if my TV's not working, I no longer have a need to snack. I didn't know what the hell to think. I'm like, oh God. And then the screen fell, but it didn't hit the ground. I'm like, and I look, and there's like a forest through my TV, and there's a guy standing there with an axe, and he hits it again, the whole TV's gone, and he's standing there looking at me. And then he walks back into this forest, gets in an SUV, and drives off. And where the SUV was are now the words, maybe you should get outside. I said, maybe you should go yourself, SUV. Where the hell is the laughing snack? Because I'll tell you right now, I am never buying an SUV. I was going to buy two laughing snacks. The only way I'm going to buy an SUV is if there's a laughing snack in it. Seriously, that's not a product? Are you kidding me? They've got Snuggies on TV. Everybody's buying a Snuggie. It's a blanket with sleeves. What the hell is that? Save yourself some money and turn your house coats around. What is wrong with you people? The laughing snack isn't a product? Are you kidding me? Don't fuck with a fat man and his snacking option. And my trainer says that's not cardio. 